Hey guys, BJ here, back with some more Warforged content, and today what I'm doing is bringing you an update on all of my kind of main Sisters of Battle decks. So if you've been watching the channel over the last month since the Sisters or Adeptus Sororitas were released, um, you can see all of the sort of deck guides that I've, I've kind of gone through with gameplay and all of that, but uh, I've had a lot of people asking me about Junith, a lot of people asking me about the new patch that just dropped, and how that I I, I think that that has changed Sisters. So I kind of wanted to um, share my updated decks for each of the Warlords and talk you through a little bit about kind of like how I think um, they are and where they are at the minute. So as we probably know, just as an overview, like the the meta report kind of showed that sisters were still underpowered just prior to this final balance patch and um i think that's pretty much my experience too i think i had a pretty um well couple of well optimized uh, erica decks that managed to get uh over 50 percent win rates which I'm, I'm really proud of because um as you can see in the meta stats you know the average win rate was much lower with that um but definitely it was um difficult you know and i kind of really had to think i felt like every game i was the underdog and i had to really think hard and grind hard to get the wins i do think that the patch that's just come out um you know it's sort of it sort of helps the sisters a little bit but i, I actually don't think it was that great a patch to be honest um i don't like the direction with some of it um but it certainly has um helped sisters from nerfing sorry changing the raging storm that offense card was definitely the biggest hindrance to sisters and so that does mean now at least we can start to play things like erica and june if with a little bit more confidence uh, in terms of the changes to the units themselves uh, i really think the, the biggest one was was actually the legendary saint catherine um who is an absolute beast of a finisher now so um she is something that i've tried to get into the decks uh, but overall, I think when you think about the Ultramarine new cards that have entered the game, I do think that uh, Sisters will will still struggle to be kind of like top tier. Um, and I, I'm i not convinced that they'll get that much of a better win rate. But I think we'll see more Junith builds now, which is which is obviously healthy for the game. Um, and anyway, let's let's dive in and take a little look. So we're going to start with Marvin. So Marvin, uh, as you know, I kind of built a Penitence Control deck. I think um, Long Tim and Ecclesiac did their versions too, so check those out. Um, but what I've basically gone for in the update is uh, is I've actually dropped some of the two drops because uh, you know for me I realised that those cards they, they they're quite. They're kind of a little bit anti-synergistic with this deck. I mean, obviously, having having the Vanguard for two is very good. And that's the one that I'd be tempted to put back in. Uh, potentially having one of those. But um, just for like a late game, powerful Vanguard for two. But otherwise, they, they, they're they anti-synergistic because, you know, the Preacher wants to pray. You can't actually put health on them like you can with the other Warlords. And you've also got lots of things that like do damage, obviously, with Penitence to, to yourself. So there's kind of no synergy there anyway with the Preacher. So I've kind of dropped those cards to, to basically create a bit of space. Um, and I feel like um, of all the Warlords, Morven is the one who can afford to be a bit more reactive anyway in the early game like doesn't have to force tempo because she's obviously got more removal tools so i'm not too worried about lack of two drops so we are going to mulligan hard for prayer early on obviously and um what i've done in the three drops is i, I was trying the i was trying if you remember in my previous version i was trying uh this card and i had mixed results with it or ultimately didn't like it um, and I look uh, at the, all the three drops, and I think what what actually works best with 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 more then, and it's definitely not Celestian. Uh, the Blade of Faith is is not a bad option. Uh, but what I've actually decided to do, if I just come back onto onto this this thing here, yeah, what I've actually done is I've put the Death Cult Assassins in. Now you could definitely put the Blade in if you want to just. Again, play for the removal rather than the, the kind of proactive drop. But um, I do like the assassin in, in Morven. I think, you know, she, she, she's decent. The worst case scenario is that she just does two damage, you know. But w the three drops are really bad in this faction. So, you know, the fact that it's got camouflage really tips it for me. And, and it does have the synergy, obviously, with, with Penitent. So we can, we can often um, get 
some some better value out of the death cult assassin you can even use it in the late game as well so you can drop it in the late game when you're going to go off with like flagellant or something and you can kind of create a or, or even drop it with um spirit of the martyr and you can kind of create a fireworks display with 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 the death cult so i run those um i put the right of restoration in which i didn't have before um obviously we've got the removal still we've got holland martyrs i think works well with with Morven. i think um you know, being able to kind of have access to those pings and having a bit more health as well kind of suits well with a warlord that's going to kind of hit or get hit. Um, relics obviously are just a must at this point in, in every uh, every deck. And we've got the Seraphins, this one Spirit of the Martyr still. I think two is probably too much, mainly because you probably end up killing yourself. <laughs> um, you, you don't have heal with Morven, so that's something that you've got to be mindful of. Even though you've got the 40 health, you are damaging yourself quite a lot. Um, and that is a little bit of a weakness to Morvin, to be honest. I have actually slipped to Cannon Essing because I'm conscious that we have dropped some bodies early on. And uh, Cannon Essing is just like the best sort of mid-game mid, mid -game, uh, body. Obviously, it um, it scales well into the late game, right? If we do get uh, Faith up, although we're not likely to get uh, 6 Faith um, uh, too early in the game. Uh, obviously, once we've played the, the, the Relics and stuff, we, we should be able to get that shield and that is quite nice as well, being able to turn 4 Relic, turn 5 Cannon S and stuff. So there's a few different synergies in there. Divine Intervention, of course. Double Superior. I actually run this now that I dropped the two drops because um, it just gives us a Vanguard. Um, the Double Penitent Engine. Talked about this in one of my other decks. It's obviously quite a rare, quite a nice treat having an extra flanker uh, in, with Marvin than you do of the other Warlords. Although it is a little bit underwhelming in the, in the damage that it's doing at this stage in the game. Often you kind of need six, uh, but I still think they're good enough to, to keep in. Uh, double Ze Ze Zephyrin, of course. One Mortifier. Mortifier took a horrible nerf from nine health to seven. Um, really don't like that. But I think, again, in this type of deck, I think this is the deck for the Mortifier. I'm not going to lean into two of them, but I think one and then the Triumph um, to give you a finisher. So that's kind of like where I'm at with Penitence Control. I don't love this deck, if I'm honest with you. At the minute, I'm I'm, I'm not... It's it's, uh, it's it's not it's not good. I'm just I'm just not a massive fan of it. I don't like the kind of lack of heal and, and whatnot. But if you like the Penitence style, I think something like this could be really interesting. Okay, so next up, I'm going to talk about my um, Big Faithful deck. Now, my Big Faithful deck, uh, the main change that I've made from the deck guide uh, that you can find on my channel is I have added a Triumph of St. Catherine and dropped one Paragon Warsuit. I really undenard about maybe dropping a Retributor, maybe dropping a Cleansing Flames, maybe dropping a Celestian or a Blade. And, I, and the more I went through it, I just felt that um, this deck in particular has quite a good balance. And so I didn't want to disrupt the balance. And I think by dropping a War Suit for St. Catherine, I'm already dropping like one of my top end cards for a different top end card. So I don't feel, feel like it disturbs the balance. And I also realized that the Paragon War Suit is, is very cool, um, but it's it's better in the Junith decks actually, which we'll come on to. So I, I think that um, just just the one and, and the St. Catherine is, I'm, I'm pretty happy. This is a really good deck. I, I think this is like, in terms of power level, this is, um, and, and consistency. I, I feel like if you wanted to take to ladder with Adeptus Sororitas, this is a really, decent deck to, to, to take to ladder um, and uh, we, we, we we do have the um, uh, what was I going to say oh I've completely lost my train of thought there as to what I was just going to say about this deck but yeah again go and watch the deck guide I, I actually think this is a pretty powerful you've got lots and lots of removal you're not getting hurt now by Raging Storm, so uh, the the win rate will will improve uh, automatically with with that. Um, so yeah, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty good deck this one, pretty good deck indeed. Um, might show uh, a game on this one in a bit. Um, all right, so how does that differ then from my Impenetrable Faith? So the Impenetrable Faith, if you remember, the idea with this deck is that we we have quite a lot of vanguards. And uh, what we've got is is more more early game in here, and what we're looking to do is obviously 
uh, play our Miraculous Feet. So we're looking for that five energy to sort of play the Miraculous Feet on. And we can create a board state that has basically an invulnerable vanguard. So it's a turn that your opponent just basically can't really do anything to you. Um, it's, a, it's an incredibly broken combination. And the whole deck is kind of based around it. So this deck plays into a tempo with uh, early command of the board. Slightly earlier probably than the Big Faith deck. And um, uh, and again, because we've got those kind of early early games. So it does rely a little bit more on obviously getting the, the com combo pieces together. But this is a very, very powerful deck. And I'm really um, excited to get back to this one and play more. Specifically because... We have the uh, Triumph of St. Catherine in here now, which I think is going to really add. Because the only thing with this deck, really, it was a really good deck. But um, we didn't have like many sort of big late game uh, finishes. Um, we were just sort of really relied on Erica's three ping per turn. Com combining with things like um, Dominion Superior and things like that for reach. So I actually think this deck is also very, very powerful. And a very, very good deck to play on, on ladder. Um... And yeah, I'm pretty happy with the balance. I'm not sure if Celestian is still the correct three drop. That's the biggest question mark I've got. But I keep it here because, you know, this this deck really is trying to play for tempo. So that's why I've got the over, say, the blade, for example, because we, 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 we're, we're trying to we're trying to kind of be proactive. It's a very proactive de deck, this one. And that's really how you kind of Erica. I, I enjoy playing Erica quite proactive, to be honest. That's why I play the Sterns and things like that. By the way, I still haven't reached rank 40 on the Forge. If you've got rank 40 on the Forge, then these last two decks that I've just shown you are much, much better. Because you can do things like drop stern on energy 4, which is like turn 3. And that's incredible. So, uh, uh, I don't have that yet. Um, but when you do, that's going to be super nice. Alright, so um, next up, we're going to look at Junith. Now, uh, for Junith, a couple of things about Junith. This is the deck that I... Um, I'm running and I actually think a good place to start is to talk about the win conditions. So um, the main, well actually no, let's start with the with Junif's ability itself. itself. Now the, the big thing obviously now is that when we've got Fall of Faith, this thing is deploying an additional battle sister. And if we just ignore, if we just ignore the fact that um, that we obviously we can pray and we can generate faith. Just forget that mechanic for a second and just think about the stats that you are generating onto the board and what you have to trade with. The two energy, you are getting six health compared that to what you know Galen give, gives you with the Storm Guardian or compare that with what Gazgul gives you with generated a Grot. You're getting six health worth of bodies and you're getting four damage on the trade, right? Because you've got uh, two range attack and you're getting two battle sisters. So that's four damage and six health for two energy, which is absolutely insane obviously it's a bit slow because it's not like erica where you just get three damage you can play from hand and immediately impact the board you've got to deploy the sisters and then wait till next turn but oh my god your opponent will start to feel that pressure and i think one of the one of the things that you've got to do with erica is when you first get the four energy you've got to use the sisters to trade so i think what people probably do wrong is they think uh, they go straight into prayer mode. But I think what you find is you go through three phases, almost like three levels of a boss fight, right? You you have the early game with Junith, then you go into this middle phase when you first get that four and four faith and you can trigger two battle sisters, and then you've got the end game. In the middle game, I think what you've got to do is you've got to have a few turns where you deploy the battle sisters and use them to trade because that's the mana advantage that you've now got over your opponent, right? You're, jet, you're breaking... The game you're you're cheating the amount of value you're generating for two but if you don't trade with that then you're not you're not getting the benefit of of that mana cheat that energy cheat so you you have to make the trades so that your opponents you know suddenly starting to feel that kind of you turn in the corner they're trying to keep up and, and trade but because it only costs you two energy and if you're playing the rest of your you know uh, energy efficiently you should start to take over the trade war um, and then, obviously, what that means is when we get into the end game, is we're going to basically overwhelm our opponent with Swarm. It almost feels a bit Turvigon-esque in a way, but <laughs> we do it with like a go-wide. And that's where I think the war suits are fantastic. The war suits in this deck now are unbelievable because you can um, have a board state where you end up with five, six prayers and you just drop this down with Vanguard and then it's like, 
it does, you know, four damage for each one of those that come comes off. It could easily end up doing 16 damage or something like that. So it's a really powerful finish. A really, it's really quite satisfying to pull off. Obviously, we've got the Triumph, which again in this deck in the in the late game, she's going to have a lot of faith because once you take over that tempo with your sisters and then have that um, th those prayers going off in the end game. Uh, Triumph is going to have a lot of faith in which to kind of deal deal damage with. Um, I also feel like Beacon of Faith is a really great uh, card in this deck because you are going to reach a point in the game where you can go wide. Obviously, you can use it earlier if you need it, but you, you are going to reach points in the game where you can go wide, and it's very likely you'll be able to at some point also boost your Lord to get the, the plus one benefit as well. So Beacon of Faith is very, very nice. Um, and again, in the three drops, I think that... Uh, We've got the uh, Blade of Faith and the Simulacrum. I think what's important with Junith is that, you know, that she because she can generate uh, a sister herself, you kind of don't need as many two drops. So again, we've we've kind of got um, uh, just a, 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 literally the prayers and a cheeky Arcoflagellant in there. And that's mainly because Junith does struggle a little bit with re removal, right? She doesn't have... That's why we, we run the Blades of faith and we've got the arco because it just helps us with with a clear you could even play the spirit of the martyr in this deck although you really have to time that right because you, you are going to be going wide eventually yourself so you don't want to obviously damage your, your own board so yeah i mean one arco flagellant playing it at the right time is going to be going to be key um and then just use your hero power right to generate those two drops and so the three drops are important that's why we got the similar acronyms. that's why we got the blade of faith and then obviously um some of the more noticeable not noticeable some of the more common um powerful cards start to kick in at the four drops phase with the relics and the cleansing flames and the retributors the seraphims obviously we run the Dom dominion superiors and astrid in the five drop uh zephyr in the six drop and we've already talked about the end game as well uh saint celestine's quite nice in the mid game to just drop that body off especially if you are like slightly behind on board and then you drop her and they can't do anything about it for return it helps you she, she does help you get back into the game and that's what this deck does by the way it does fall behind in the early game i think from a mulligan perspective you really want to be looking quite hard for um the relic of saint catherine i feel like of all the sisters decks this deck really relies on this card like when you've got this in your opening hand you are much more likely to win and the reason for that is that um erica were playing more proactive units as i said earlier so and some of them are vanguard so you are able to chip away and get a couple of points of faith with the erica deck with this deck you're just really relying on the sisters and they're not very good and if you're playing against um you're going to kind of lose the tempo war early on and it's going to be very easy for your opponent to control your faith generators and that's why relic of saint catherine is just so important in this particular deck if you don't get the relics till too late then often you know that, that Junif will be overrun and before she even kind of gets going. It's very much like an engine deck, and this is the this is really the keys to the ignition. Um, so uh, super super important in the opening hand. I'd also keep prayer in your opening hand, and depending on what you're playing against, you might want to keep the Arco Flagellant as well as a way to kind of. You probably would, you know. You probably want to use this in the earlier game. It's to help you kind of stay up with tempo and the board. And then the only other ones you, I would look to keep in the opening hand are the Simulacrum Bearer or, and or the, um, the Blade of Faith as well. Depending on what you're anticipating them to play in their early game, this is just giving you a kind of a, a, an option to remove could be, could be quite important. Um, you know, obviously the Stern Guard Sergeant just got nerfed and went down to free health, so that in a way is a little buff to Blade of Faith when you think that it's a pretty much a UM meta at the minute. So uh, Blade of Faith is 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 quite nice actually at the minute. Um, yeah, so that that is kind of the deck. As I say, you're really looking to stabilise in the early game, and then uh, sorry, you, you're trying to get your get get get, get through the early game. Uh, try to stay up as best you can you will fall behind stabilizing that mid game once you've popped that relic being able to get two um sisters out of turn make sure you trade in the mid phase and then switch to kind of faith generation when you can bring down the big the big dogs and uh and win the game uh so that's the style of play i think with junith i think there is another card that we haven't talked about and I, honestly i haven't tested it yet but i do i do think it's another win con so 
It's particularly newer players, if you haven't got like Triumph for St. Catherine, for example, I would highly recommend as a replacement for her, if you haven't got that, I would highly recommend the four drop uh, Fiery Conviction because you will reach a point uh, where you have a wide board if you've stayed in the game. And um, this is like the Storm of Fire for Tower, right? This gives you a massive plus three per unit. Um, that includes your Warlord, by the way. Um, and um, I, 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 I don't know whether the Give Additional One is permanent, by the way, because it's the way it's worded. I, I don't know. But even if it isn't, it doesn't matter. This is all about having um, being a finisher. And given that you are running the three drop, similar Crimbera, remember that when this prays, it gives plus one to melee attack as well. So there could be a combo there where... You know, you, you pray with Simulacrum um, to kind of bo boost that, and then you obviously drop the Fiery Conviction, and that's a winner. So I haven't I haven't tested that yet, but I definitely think that this is the deck for this card. Uh, so that is definitely one that you could try. Uh, okay, so I said I was going to um, just show you my big faith deck uh, upgrade, and I just said I would sh jump into a game. Obviously, the Ultramarines is um uh pretty common right now uh tr -tr 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 -tr. so what we did here is we actually just kept cleansing flames because the other two options are just a bit too slow now it's not the, it's not the greatest hand obviously when you're playing against Amanius. this is a very good um uh offense card for, for for sisters when you're playing against marines because we're not in a rush to beat them down and they can obviously try and beat us down so we're just going to heal there we're going to try and hope that the thunderstorm can boost our energy and give us a give us a better chance this card's very good by the way i've, I've i'm really starting to like this card it can it can be quite problematic and i realized it playing against it more than playing with it like how problematic it can be in the early game um but the way we're what we've kind of currently got we'll just kind of hit it but you see that even there obviously we can't finish it off because of the camouflage so quite quite a nice card really so he tempos out um chronos so uh we've really got to uh, address this board, and that's why we can't afford to play the Relic here. We're just going to play it to catch up, clear the board. Fortunately, he doesn't have uh, Chaplin, and because he because he tempoed out Kronos, which was his 4-drop, that left him short, and sometimes that's a bit of a misplay, I think, from Ultramarine side, is like, you've really got to think about your curve when you're doing that, and so it enables us to kind of, like, have a proactive turn. So we're going to just pray, obviously getting the shield and beefing up uh, Astrid. I'm expecting Inspired Retribution, but, you know, drawing that out on a 5-drop is really good, actually. Really taking one for the team there, because... Uh, we, obviously, we've got some bigger bigger cards to come, and it was only 5 for 5, and it allows us to be proactive again, so we can drop Stern. Uh, this is like, this is really, the game plan's really coming together when you sort of see this approach. And of course, there's nothing he can do from a stratagem perspective, so instead he's going to do, he's going to try and, uh, he's going to try and stun lock us, basically, which he does do. Uh, he gets the 50-50. And stuns her. And obviously when she's stunned, that also means she can't pray. So that's a bit of a problem for us. So this is where we're going to play the Relic, right? And it's something that I quite like to do is, is to play the Relic once we can also play Fury of the Righteousness. Because that's that three damage from hand, it really does still enable us to trade at the same time that we lose the tempo of playing the Relic. So that's, that's a really nice um, opportunity to play it. But of course... He, he's able to take the initiative a little bit in terms of being proactive on the board now. So we're getting to that scary phase with UM where we've got librarians and predators and stuff that can come down. So we've got to be pretty mindful of that. And he's able to manipulate the mana, the energy there, so that he just pings this down to four and trades. So a bit sad that we didn't really get to use the stern. Um, now, what we figure here is we might as well go with the four drop rather than the six drop because... Actually, with the Fury of the Righteousness talent, we can clear this, and that still gives us enough energy to drop the Preacher, which, by the way, by faith, is now going to come down with a shield. The holy of the burns me. 
And we're just going to go ahead and... Uh... No, we didn't We didn't ping. We prayed, didn't we? I, I couldn't remember if I pinged the shield. So he actually clears the shield and then brings his flanker on, obviously, to deal with that. There's a couple of ways we could do this. Obviously, if we use the Zephyrin to clear this, um, then we'd only have to... We'd only have to... Um, health left. Yes, we could use the shield from prayer on it, but instead what I've decided to do, I try to make use of my warlord power as much as I can with Eric once you've got it doing three damage. It's, it's too good to kind of be ignoring and it really helps you get more value out of your cards as well. Okay, here comes the big dog. Now, this thing just has to die. <laughs> um, another reason why I'm happy that we, uh, we we kept the Zephyr last time. I mean, there's an argument to say that we're using... We use the prayer thing incorrectly and in putting it on the Lord. Uh, you know, we could have used it to just trick a trade, for example, and this guy still be at full health. That is definitely one, uh, one, one thing to consider. Um, so poten potentially a misplay there, but it has also helped us reach that eight, and he's not got to be now thinking about our uh, our AOE, our Will of Gork. <laughs> um, so that'll be worrying him. And the nice thing is here, look, obviously we can we can use this shielded Lord now to clear this what's become quite a big body, and uh, we've picked up another prayer anyway. a pretty good card that I think that's a uh, I think that's actually a very good card so we're gonna use our warlord to trade here and I think we decide we're actually gonna save the prayer and try to use that on a you know something we can kind of trick the trade with I do like the regen on Saint Celestine always nice you know and she's really forced out you know look at this she's forced out some uh, some 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 effort here to, just to remove that so quite a nice cleansing flames there obviously once again righteous fury now can clean this up pretty nicely Now, there is a question about do we use uh you know do we use the prayer here do we do we attack first and um or put it up how do we want to do it and i think i think honestly i've gone with the ultra safe route i'm not sure putting it on erica was necessary uh especially we've already seen a death from above out we, it's not that we're worried about kalga having massive reach for example um we might have been better off just putting this on on here um, potentially, it would have, you know, that that wouldn't have then been able to trade as easily as it just did. So, you know, but I was worried about in, you know, the the inspired retribution. That's that's the that's the question mark. But now we'll look, Amalia with eleven is able to just clear this straight away, and then we've got the win with uh, Stein, Stern. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, so that was our that was the first deck. That was the big faithful. Um, uh, really nice one to take to lad if you want to play sisters right now. So there you go, guys. That is my update on all of my sisters decks. Uh, let me know in the comments which ones you like best. Uh, any changes that you have made and what you're running as well. Good luck on ladder, and I'll see you in the next one.